welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a watercolor tutorial on eucalyptus branches. The products you're going to need are watercolor paper, some watercolors, small detail brushes, and masking fluid if you have it. So let's get started. Before we start painting, we're going to want to do a rough sketch of our eucalyptus branches in order to figure out which shapes we're going to be using. The photo on the right shows the eucalyptus branches and the different shapes that you'll get. So the leaves that are coming towards us are more of a triangular shape, whereas the leaves that are coming out to the side have more of an oval shape to them. So we're going to be using these techniques in order to create a three-dimensional eucalyptus branch for our painting. I'm just going to be using a paintbrush and some clay to kind of give you an example of what these leaves look like three-dimensionally. So the little clay pieces are our leaves coming out of the stem. So as you can see, depending on the way you look, the leaves are going to be angled differently. So here we have one leaf coming forward while the other is pushed back. And as you can see, the pushed back leaf looks bigger. And when it's tilted to the side, they're both kind of evenly oval shaped. And when one leaf is facing directly forward, you can just see that front leaf there and nothing else behind it. So this is how we're going to get our three-dimensional look for the eucalyptus branches. All right, so now on to the watercolor paper. I'm going to be doing three eucalyptus branches. And to the right, you'll see that I have a reference photo just to show you a little more clearly what exactly I'm sketching out because it's hard to see with the pencil. You can follow along with this sketch if you'd like or you can use your own reference photo. It's completely up to you. And for the other two branches, I'm basically going to be following the exact same pattern as the one on the left, but maybe just switching up the leaves in between. So really, once you have the first one down, you can just do the exact same to the next ones. Now that my sketch is complete, I'm just going over it lightly with a kneading eraser to lift the harsh pencil marks and that way the pencil marks themselves won't show through on my watercolor. This is optional and if you don't have a kneading eraser you can use any regular eraser just gently press it onto the paper. The next step is optional if you don't have any masking fluid but I'm going to be taking some masking fluid and completely masking out all of the stems on each branch. So I'm using a needle with my masking fluid in order to get super, super thin lines on my stems. You can use a paintbrush if you want. I find this needle worked actually really great and that way I also didn't have to clean up a brush because cleaning masking fluid off a brush is not the easiest thing. For this painting, I'm going to be using two detail brushes. They are both from above ground and the specifics of the brushes will be in the description. Like most watercolors, I'm going to be starting off with a little bit of water on my brush before mixing in my pigment. The three colors I'm going to be using today are green, blue, and red. So you can really use any variations of those that you have in order to get a minty green type color. I start off with mixing my blue and green together in order to get a turquoise color, but I find for me personally that turquoise was just too harsh and too vibrant of a color for the eucalyptus plant that I was going for, and I wanted it to be more of a mint tone like you can see in this practice that I did. So in order to do that, you wanna add the slightest amount of red to your mixture, and this is going to counteract that blue and green and mute down the vibrancy of your pigment. Make sure to have a testing card with you in order to get the right color that you want and also the right consistency with the amount of water you have in it. So I wanted a really, really watery consistency in order to get a super light color for my preliminary painting. Because we want to add our shadows on after, you want to start off with a really light color. I started off by planning out which leaves I wanted to be lighter and which ones I wanted to be darker. So this will depend on where you think your light source is coming from and where you think the shadows will be forming on each leaf. 
So I went in with a light wash of watercolor on each of the back leaves on the first branch. You can do whatever way you want, as long as you have some sort of shadow in there, you can keep it looking realistic. Here you can see I'm just going through and I'm filling in all of the leaves that I want to be super light. And after we're done this, I'm going to be going over them again and adding shadows and then adding in the darker colors for the leaves in the background or the leaves that aren't getting hit with the light source directly. In order to get my darker color, I just ended up mixing the watercolors that I had used before right into the mixture that I already had and just making sure I didn't have as much water as I did initially. And this creates basically the exact same shade but just a little bit darker. You can also do this the other way around where you start with your darker shades first if you're kind of separating it by leaf and that's perfectly fine too. I just decided to do the lighter ones first. So as you can see, each of the leaves that are facing forward now on our first branch are going to be darker than the ones in the background. Now that the basis of your painting is done, we're going to be working on the shadows next. So for the shadows, I like to have two paint brushes with me, one with the pigment on it, and another clean brush with just water on it that I can use to blend out that pigment. Because I'm not really going for harsh, um, dramatic shadow looks, I'm more looking for a soft blend. When you're making shadows on your leaves, you want to have one main area where you have the darkest amount of pigment. And for me, I typically like to put the darkest pigment on the base of the leaf, as I think that's where the least amount of light would be hitting the leaf. It's also important to look at the back leaves of your branches and also add shadows to that as you're having one leaf in front of the other. So there's obviously going to be a shadow cast onto the back leaf. So you have to make sure you have some kind of shadow towards the back leaf in order to create depth. Once your painting is dry and you like the way it looks, it's time to take off the masking fluid where the stems are. You can do this by just rolling it off or using an eraser, whatever you prefer. When you start painting the stems, you are going to want to use a really light wash, kind of like the first color that we used in the beginning for our really light leaves. And you're just going to want to add a thin wash onto each section of the stem. For adding shadow to the stem, you're going to want to use a slightly darker color than the stem itself and add shadow below each section of the leaves. This will create more of a three-dimensional look and more of a realistic look for our eucalyptus branches. And here's our finished product. I hope you guys liked this tutorial and I hope it helped. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and I'll see you next time.